Hey guys, Shane here with eTrail.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Red Arc's Red Vision combined with Red Arc's Manager 30 on a 2017 Keystone Hideout. We have the Red Vision and the Manager 30 tied together. You can get each one of these separate or you can get these as a kit. You can find each of them or the kit here at eTrailer. And what it does, it allows you to take all of your 12 volt power in your camper RV and use it off one panel or control it off one panel. This is going to be designed for more of your boondockers. Maybe you have a, a van or something that you have converted into a camper. Or maybe you have, say, a box trailer, which I see a lot of now. Uh, you have an enclosed trailer that you're converting over to a camper. So you're kind of designing your own camper. This gives you a 12-volt power source, but gives you a single panel to be able to control it on. Now, another nice thing about this system is with having the single panel inside the camper, we don't have to go around searching for light switches or anything like that. If you have a cell phone, tablet, computer, you can control it all off of that also. So maybe we pull in somewhere uh, at night, we pull into a campsite to take our cell phone or our tablet out, open the app up, and we can turn on our inside lights and any other power that we need to turn on so we can see what we're doing without ever having to go inside the camper. Let's go over some of the other things that the Red Vision can do. Um, as I mentioned, we can control all of our 12 volt power off of, our, off of a single panel or single screen. But what about our water tanks? Um, things like that, a black water tank, gray water tank, and our fresh water tank. We can actually set monitors up or gauges up. We can control our water level. So we can set an alarm on our screen that when our water level gets so high, say our gray water tank, our water level gets so high, it's going to tell us or set that alarm off to tell us we need to empty it before we start seeing it, you know, see our gray water start coming up through the bottom of the shower where, you know, it's not draining anymore. Uh, we can set our water temperature so we can hook up a meter or hook up a gauge into our fresh water tank to tell us what our water temperature is. Now you're probably asking yourself how do you charge your batteries if we're at boondock and we're using the power from our batteries how do we charge it? Well that's where the Manager 30 comes in. When we combine the Manager 30 with the Red Vision now we not only have the control of our 12 volt power sources in our camper or RV but we also have the ability to charge our batteries while we're using that power. Manager 30 allows you to use solar panels, connect them through the Manager 30. They run to your batteries to charge them, again, while we're using the power. On top of that, with having the Manager 30, along with the Red Vision, we can hook up to our vehicle and charge our battery from our vehicle. Maybe we're out at a campsite somewhere. Uh, we have no shore power to hook up to. We back our truck up. Our kit for a Manager 30 and Red Vision has come with the Anderson plug that we hook into our vehicle and our trigger wire for a Manager 30. The power and ground, ground goes to the frame, power is going to run into your Manager 30. On the vehicle side, ground is going to ground to a good frame ground. Positive wire is going to be routed up to your engine compartment close to your battery. Uh, on trucks, it usually is pretty easy. You can usually file the frame rail to some factory wiring to get it up there. You just want to make sure you're staying away from anything hot or moving. Once you get up to the battery, you're going to mount a fuse. You're going to connect the wire to the fuse, and then from the fuse, you're going to go to the positive side of the battery. Now, then we have our trigger wire. And what the trigger wire is for, it's to activate the Manager 30 from your vehicle when you turn the ignition on. Now, you may or may not need this. This wire is designed for vehicles with variable, variable voltage regular alternators. So you need to make sure you check your owner's mail or determine what alternator you have because you may or may not need this. This is what our control panel is going to look like inside our camper. You want to make sure that wherever you're going to mount this, your Red Vision is mounted within a proximity. So the cable that's coming off this, the R-Bus cable that comes off this, is about 13 foot long. So you just want to make sure you kind of plan that out where you're going to mount it. Uh, you can see we kind of have ours mounted here next to our radio. Here we have our on and off. You'll notice the icons. Now this is, uh, you have to set this up once you get everything hooked up. But again, this allows us to control everything. So we can turn on our lights by the push of a button. 
and turn on our radio. Then you turn on our outside lights, our water pump, our fridge, and anything else we want to, we may want to set up on there. So it gives us a lot of adjustability to control different things a lot easier. Now, we go through our screen here a little bit. Uh, this is our Bluetooth here. Um, there's just there's a lot of stuff to go through, so I'm not gonna go through all of it. I'll just kind of go through a few things. Uh, this kind of allows you to set your screen up the way you want, um, you know how you want your backlight, stuff like that. Set your date and time. You can change your temperature from Fahrenheit to Celsius, depending on where you're at. You can do 12 hour, 24 hour clock. This is gonna be our battery level here. You'll notice a little icon up here, it's a car. When we're hooked up, you can see it's green. So if we had solar power, the sun would be green. If we had, were hooked up to shore power, the little plug would be green. Being hooked up, you'll notice that our manager 30 is lit up. This is showing that we're getting power from an outside source and putting it into our battery. And the same, whether we're using a cell phone or a computer, we're gonna have that same screen. So. Uh, as I mentioned, I don't have water tanks hooked up on my main screen, but this is what your water tanks would look like. We can go into our control panel and we can do the same thing off of our computer or cell phone. So as far as when we have our camper or something we're parking it for uh, the season, we're not going to be using it. What we're going to do is we're going to come to this screen. You have your left and right arrows. You're going to come all the way over and then you're going to use your up and down arrows. You're going to come to system settings and it's going to tell you touring mode. When you set it up and you're using it, you want to be in touring mode. This has the ability to go into storage mode. And what storage mode does is the manager 30 will maintain your battery while it's in storage. So it's not going to allow it to drop down past a certain amount. It's going to maintain that level so that when you come to your camper, you're ready to use it the next time, it's ready to go. So we can also set up the system so that once our battery drops down past a certain amount, it's going to shut our power off so we're not draining our battery all the way out. So we come to this screen, again, we use our up and down arrow, we go to BMS, which is our battery management system. We can set an alarm to whatever level you want. For instance, ignition, as I mentioned before, we have it set to on. We can do a voltage alarm. Once our battery drops down past 10 volts or gets down to 10 volts, it's gonna set a voltage alarm to tell us we need to either hook up our vehicle or plug into shore power, either one, because our battery is getting low. So the low disconnect, uh, we have it triggered for voltage. So for instance, whatever load we uh, want to disconnect when our battery starts running low, we can set that. For instance, if we have our lights. We can set it to disconnect at 10.5 volts. When our battery charges back up to 12 volts, it's gonna automatically allow us to power them back up. Now again, it doesn't necessarily have to be the lights. You can set it up for any other 12 volt power source that you're wanting to disconnect. Now to set up your battery, you're basically gonna to come to the BMS setting screen. You're gonna hit your soft key. You're gonna use your up and down arrow to toggle between uh, these three. This is going to tell you what battery you have. So you're just going to scroll over with the left and right arrow, pick whatever batteries you have. Once you pick your battery, you're going to use a down arrow. You're going to set the amp hours of the battery. So let's say you have a battery bank, you have more than one battery tied together. You're going to set the total amp hours for the whole battery bank. And then you're going to set the maximum current amps. Once you get it set up, press the check mark. It's gonna show it there. If we go scroll to the right, use our right arrow. This is gonna be our charging. If we hit the top one, go back here. If we hit the top one, it's gonna tell us our state of charge per hour. And that's for our battery. This is gonna take state of charge per day. This is gonna be charged from solar power per day. 
So it allows us, if we have solar panels, to tell us how much power or how much uh, power we're drawing from our solar panels and charging our batteries. This is what our system is going to look like once it's installed. Uh, this is just a general idea of how I installed it on this particular camper. It doesn't necessarily have to be installed in this area. This is going to be our main control unit for our 12 volt power sources. Uh, it's going to come with all of your fuses. We have 10 amp and 30 amp. So anything we run through this, uh, we want to make sure we're not going over 30 amps. Um, you can also do, as I mentioned, your water tanks. You can do an inverter and you have two temperature sensors that come with the system. You can hook up a charger, which we have here. That's going to be our manager 30, which is going to allow you to maintain charge in your batteries with solar panels or off your vehicle. This is where all of our stuff is being powered in. All of our 10 amp circuits, for instance, your radio, uh, your lights, your awning, your outside lights, and then, of course, our 30 amp circuits, refrigerator, and then our water pump. Having the clear panel on here makes it very easy because if a fuse happens to blow, the one that's blown is going to actually light up to make it very easy to determine where the situation is or where the problem is. Each one of these is marked. These are actually stickers that come with the kit. So once you get each wire installed, you can mark it with the maximum amp and what you have it powered to. You'll notice the digital I.O. or in and out here. That is, that allows you to hook up certain circuits that will be triggered by the ignition off your vehicle. For instance, if we want to hook the refrigerator up and leave it running while we're traveling to keep our food cold, we can hook it up so that when we hit the ignition, the refrigerator stays on. And saying that, we can also hook our lights up to it. So if we have the lights on in here, we turn the refrigerator on, the lights on, we're loading it up, getting ready to leave early in the morning or later in the evening when it's dark, we hit our ignition, it will shut our lights off, but leave our refrigerator on, and that all can be set up through your panel. So our two temperature uh, inputs here, what those are for is it comes with two temperature gauges. We can take one, plug it in, and we can hang one inside, and it will tell us what the temperature inside the camper or RV is on our screen. The other one, we can actually run it through with our wiring, hang it outside, and it'll tell us what the outside temperature is. So it allows us to gauge both from your panel. As I mentioned, we can hook up an inverter. If we have an inverter on our camper, we can hook our inverter through the Red Vision and be able to monitor it through our screen. What our inverter does, it basically takes 12 volt uh, DC power and switches it over to AC. For instance, you know, we're boondocking, we're just running off our battery we'll be able to uh, switch that power so we can use our microwave. Maybe we want to use a coffee pot or something like that. Well, let's talk about our Manager 30. Uh, Manager 30 is a battery management system. With the Red Vision, the Red Vision allows you to control all of your 12 volt power through one panel. The Manager 30, what it does, is it allows you to charge your batteries, your 12 volt batteries, whether that's through solar panels or plugged into 110 power or 120 power or even charging from your vehicle. So when you combine these two, you not only have the control of everything 12 volt power inside your camper or RV off of one panel, but you also have the ability to charge your batteries while you're using them. Now as far as the installation, the installation process is going to be uh, pretty straightforward. It is a little time consuming. It's not something that's going to be done in an hour. Um, we actually installed it on this Keystone hideout. Um, they were having a little bit of problem with their converter and decided, you know what, we're gonna do the Red Vision and be able to get all of our 12 volt sources or powers into one spot to make it a little bit easier. So, you know, as I mentioned before, this is gonna be more designed for uh, somebody who boondocks a lot. Maybe you're designing your own camper, or you're converting something over to, uh, a camper. To start your installation, you need to determine where uh, you're going to mount everything. You need to determine where you're going to mount your red art system along with your red vision. Also where your panel is going to be because your wires are only going to be so long 
from your panel to your red arc or to your red vision. So we need to kind of have a plan of what we're going to do. We decided to mount ours right here under the bed because we're close to the nose of the trailer. We can easily go out, get to the battery. And uh, where we're going to be mounting the panel, which I'll show you in a little bit, we're going to be able to go out and come back in and tie into this. So first we're going to start with our red arc. Uh, our red arc is going to have a cable that has to go into a 110 outlet. So this camper does not have a 110, so I'm going to have to install one. I'm going to install the red arc here. I'm going to put a hole here and run my cable out into this compartment over to this corner. And I'm actually going to install an outlet right over in this corner. Um, to get this here, we need power to it. So what I did is we have a plug here. I just tied into it, ran it right down behind the wall, and I'll be able to tie my plug right into it. You can see how I have it mounted here. Because this is kind of a laundry chute, I guess you could use it for. Um, I set it up this way to keep the plug out from sticking out in front of this hole. So it keeps this open as much as possible. It's really up to you how you set it up. But this is where your Manager 30 needs to plug in. You need to make sure when mounting these, um, they really can be mounted in any orientation, but they need to be on a flat, solid surface. So that's why we're deciding to do it in here. Um, it's out of the weather. We're going to take our power cable for our manager 30. Go ahead and feed it through the hole here. And plug in just like that. Then we can come back and we can cover that hole up a little bit later. Now we'll go ahead and mount our red vision. You want to make sure it's far enough away from this edge that has the green plugs on it. Uh, we're going to be coming out of this and tying into that. So we want to make sure we're going to have enough room. With your Manager 30 kit, you're gonna get a long cable and a short cable like this. And you're gonna get a connector that looks like this. We're gonna connect our short cable into the single side, like that. The other end of our cable is gonna connect into our Manager 30 right there, like that. In your Red Vision kit, you're gonna get a short cable. We're going to pluck it into one of the double sides. You're going to bring it up and you're going to connect it into the R bus connector right on the bottom. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a small drill bit. I'm going to drill a pilot hole right here on the floor all the way out through the bottom. I'm going to take a, going to use a small screwdriver. We're going to stick it down like that. We're going to go down underneath and see where that comes out. So my screwdriver wasn't quite long enough to come out. So what I did is I just took, uh, if you have a wire hanger or something, you can poke it through there and you can see where it's coming out. So what we're going to do is we're going to open this up a little bit. Now that we know we're in a good area, we can go back up and we can open our hole up big enough that we can get our two our power on ground wires coming from our battery through it. We're gonna have two four gauge wires, your power and your ground, that we have to get out and then up to the battery. So we need to make that hole big enough that we can get those two wires through it. Now you can drill your hole two different ways. You gotta remember we're gonna have four wires going through. Two four gauge wires, power and ground. Then we're gonna have two wires like this. So you can do a larger hole salt bit that you can fit them all through but then you have to seal the hole and you can do a smaller one and what I did is did the smaller one took a drill bit drilled out one side just a hole so I can fit those two cables in there and everything I don't have such a big hole that I have to seal up so now what we'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and take this wire that comes in 
your red vision kit. This is going to go to the monitor. I'm going to go ahead and feed this down and out. So the cable we just fed down for our monitor, I'm going to bring it over and it's going to go into the second RBUS, RBUS uh, connector on the bottom of our red vision. Next we're going to have a battery sensor. It's going to look like this. You're going to have to get it close enough to the battery where this can be hooked to the positive side and you're going to have a negative cable that comes off of your uh, negative side of your battery and then we're going to have a ground wire that comes from this side and comes up and hooks to our manager 30 and our red vision system. The other cable coming off of this looks like that. We need to get that up through the hole and into the area here where our red vision and our manager 30 are. So I'm going to use the wire that I had passed down before and go ahead and feed it down and out through the hole. Now we'll go down underneath and I'm going to tape that cable to that wire and I can pull it up through. So just give me an idea. Our sensor is actually going to be mounted right on the inside of this uh, cross member on our frame rail. So we're going to take this cable, some electrical tape, just tape it on here. Make sure you don't try not to damage that end on there. And then we can feed that up through our hole. Get this cable pulled up. And then pull it off of our wire here, the cable. This is going to get plugged in right here. Now, we can go ahead and get our power and ground wires ran down through the hole. And I'll leave a little bit of my power and ground up here until we get it connected. Next, we're gonna mount our fuse holder for our power cable. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna mount it right there. Since we're going into uh, wood, I'm just going to use um, regular wood screws like I did with the Red Vision and Manager 30. We're going to have a, a uh, connector that fits right underneath on this bottom side into our Red Vision. What we need to do is we need to go from here over to that connector and from here out. We're going to measure our length, make sure we have enough to get to it. We'll cut our cable. Now we're going to take it and we're going to cut an even length. And that one's going to go from our manager 30 over to the second port on our positive side. Next we're going to take one of our short cables, we're going to feed it into one of the ports on our connector. Take a small flathead and we'll tighten it down. Pull, make sure it's in there good. And we're going to do that same thing with the other one. You're going to have some ring terminals that come with your Red Vision. They're going to have small holes in them. These are what are going to, you're going to use to connect to your breaker that we just put in. We need to make sure before we crimp it down that we got it turned the right way because this wire is pretty thick so that we're not putting a lot of pressure on either one of the components. And that looks good there. So now we'll take our crimper that comes with our installation kit. What we're going to do is on the back side there's a little pin. You're going to lift up. We're going to get that set in place like that. And then we'll take a hammer. Make sure 
get a good hold. Once we got it crimped down, we're going to come back with a soldering iron and we're going to solder this edge right here, right along where our connector is going into our wiring. So we haven't soldered it yet. I'm actually going to put heat shrink sleeve over the end too. So essentially that's going to go on like that. This plugs right down here in the bottom like that. That goes there. And then for our third wire, with your Manager 30, it's going to come with a piece that looks like this, and it plugs right into this end. On the end of your Manager 30, it's marked. As you can see right here, it has your plus, load, negative, ignition, and then uh, your other ports for if you're going to be putting in uh, solar panels. So we're going to take this guy, and we're going to put it in the correct port. Take that. And that'll plug in like that. The line, the power wire coming out of your Manager 30 needs to be hooked on the charger side. And the line going out to your battery is hooked on the auxiliary battery side. So I just switched those two lines. Just make sure you hook them up uh, correctly. Once you get all of your wires connected, you're going to take those screws and screw them in, and that's going to hold this bracket onto the unit. Now we'll do our ground. We're going to do the same thing we did with our positive coming from our Manager 30 over to our Red Vision, kind of like this. It's going to come with another port like that, and then our cable coming up from outside is going to go into the other side. This is actually going to plug in right on the back side here, right behind the positive. Next, we're going to mount our battery center on our frame rail. What I suggest using is a junction box like this. We'll mount this on our frame rail first. We'll remove this piece here. We'll mount this inside. And then our junction box will have a lid and that will protect our center. I'm just going to use self tappers to get this put in place. Now I can remove this. On the inside here, once you remove this plate, you can see there's some little uh, tabs there that were hitting the back side of this. We're actually going to trim those down so that we can make sure we get our lid on when we put our sensor in. Should be able to just take a utility knife and just cut them off just like that. And we'll get our battery sensor mounted inside the box. Now, before we make any connections to our battery, we need to determine what we're going to be connecting to the Red Vision. The reason is, is the Red Vision is designed to be able to control any of our 12 volt power sources, uh, including our water pump, our refrigerator, any of our lights into your exterior or awnings. We need to determine what we're going to be tying into the Red Vision. One thing you have to keep in mind is that the Manager 30 has a max output of 30 amps. So you wanna make sure whatever you're drawing from the battery is not more than 30 amps because the Red Vision, when you're uh, plugged into shore power, is not gonna have enough to recharge the battery because you're pulling more than it's charging. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the interior lights, we're gonna do the radio, and we're gonna do the water pump and the refrigerator. We're gonna start with our interior lights what we need to do is we need to come to our panel, uh, our fuse panel inside the camper. And this one I actually had to go through and figure it out because they really didn't have them marked very well. An easy way to figure that out is on your 12 volt side, you're gonna say, turn on the interior lights. You're gonna pull a fuse. If it shuts off the lights, you know that's your 12 volt power source and then mark it on your panel. 
once you get everything determined, whatever you're going to be running, uh, go ahead and disconnect your battery, any power you have running to the camper. And then what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the wire off of this panel, disconnect our ground. We're going to extend it down and then over and hook it into the Red Vision. So I'm going to start with my interior lights. My interior lights are determined is this second one. So this green and white wire here, I'm just going to uh, remove that screw, disconnect that wire and pull it out. So we'll start with this one and pull it out. And if you look right down here, this is where our wires are grounded to a panel down there. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna not only disconnect from here, but we're gonna disconnect our ground there, extend both of them so we can hook both power and ground into the Red Vision system. So I'm having a hard time uh, getting the screw out to pull the ground wire out. You can see how it's kind of corroded down there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut it. Um, it's just a ground wire, so we're not gonna really have to worry about that too much, that wire coming off of there. Just cut it. We'll take our power and ground for our interior lights, extend them. There's a hole right there. Now I'm using 12 volt jacketed wire. I'm sorry, 12 gauge jacketed wire. You can find it here at E-Trailer. Depending on how many items you're running over to your Red Vision, will determine the length that you're going to need and how or how far you have to go and the length you're going to need. Now, depending on how your ground is. I'm gonna run both my power and ground to the Red Vision. You don't necessarily have to do that. You can only run your power as long as your ground is a good chassis ground. Our grounds here are kind of corroded, so I don't want to take a chance of it causing an issue later on. So I'm already gonna be here. I'm just gonna go ahead and run both power and ground straight to the Red Vision. I've got my jacketed wire already pushed down through following my factory wiring out to the bottom of the camper. Now I'm just gonna make my connections to my wires that I disconnected. Strip back each one. Your kit is not gonna come with buck connectors, but you can find them here at eTrailer.com. I'm gonna use my white for ground and my black for power. Make sure everything's holding good. I'm going to go ahead and take some electrical tape and run it around my butt connectors just to kind of give it a little extra protection underneath the cabinet. So now where we're going to be connecting our 10 amp loads, which is our lights, or our 30 amp loads, which would be our refrigerator or water pump, I'm going to have to bring my wires back up. I'm not going to be able to use the same hole that I had drilled earlier because it's too small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to center and drill a hole, another hole in my floor, just big enough that I can bring any wires up to connect to either one of these ports that I'm going to be running. I'm going to use a 7 8 hole saw bit. And we're going to do the same process here that we did for this hole all the way down through the bottom. See where it comes out, we'll make our slit and feed our wire up. So this is where my wire came out underneath my uh, refrigerator. I'm just gonna follow my power or my factory wiring up this frame rail and then I'll just cut across to underneath the bed uh, and go up to my red vision. Once we find our hole, cable and just feed it up inside. So you're going to have some smaller connectors here. These are going to be for your 10 amp loads and you're going to have some a uh, little bit bigger ones. Those are going to be for your 30 amp loads. We're going to take a ground. We're going to hook it into one of the ports. I'm going to have to loosen that one a little. We'll take a small screwdriver. We'll 
take our power, do the same thing. Once you get one done, you're going to repeat the process for any other 10 amp loads and 30 amp loads you're going to be running. Now we've got all of our lines ran. Some of the things that we ran were our interior lights. We did our radio. We did our exterior lights, our awning, our water pump, and our refrigerator. Once we get all of our lines connected, uh, whatever we're connecting to these attachments, we can go ahead and tighten these into place. We'll take a piece of our heat shrink tubing, put it over the top, and we'll take our heat gun and shrink it up. We're going to add on our 80 amp fuse. Then we can take a 3 8 socket or wrench and we'll tighten those into place. So I actually decided to flip this over in the box so that these two holes were at the bottom instead of the top so that if by chance any moisture got in here uh, it's able to, to leak out and not just sit inside the box. Um, on each side of your sensor. You're going to see a B negative, which is battery negative. That's going to be your line running out to your the negative side of your battery. Line coming from your red vision is going to hook on this side. You're going to make sure you add a short wire, earth ground, and you can ground it right to the frame rail. Go ahead and get our power wire ran through the frame rail here, where it's going to be connected to our battery. We're going to have a sensor. This is for it. Uh, it comes off of this sensor. It's going to hook into your battery to monitor the temperature of the battery. We're going to run that through. We're going to leave that sit up here. And we can go ahead and install our cap. Next, we're going to mount our screen. You need to determine if you're going to flush mount it or if you're going to countersink it. If you're going to countersink it, Actually, it's going to come with a template, so you can do it either way. I'm going to flush mount it because this panel is pretty thin. If you're flush mounting it, there's going to be a circle here. This is for your plug to come in and hook into it. So you can see I centered it inside this panel, taped it on. I cut this. Now I'm going to use this to make me a center mark. Then I can remove this, and then I'm going to drill this hole out. So from our red vision, we need to hook up our monitor wire. So what I did is I measured from this outside edge of the camper over and then back drill the hole and it's coming it's actually coming into the bottom of the cabinet um, into an open uh, hollow area so it keeps the wire hidden once it's hooked up once i drilled the hole i had somebody up top and i fed this pull wire straight up through it and had them grab it and just hook it on uh, the opening i taped the end of my cable it's going to be hooking into my control panel to the wire. Now I can go up top and I'll pull that through. You see right up here in this corner, this is where my wire's coming out. I decided to do it that way so that I didn't have to drill through this to go through the floor and this wire wasn't sitting back in here. So I like to keep it hidden. <laughs> That's why I chose to do it that way. I'm using my screen in a very small drill bit. That way I can tell make sure it's centered and I can run it right through the holes where my hardware is going to go. That'll give me a perfect lineup for my hardware. Now let's come back and open those up just a little bit more.
fed my cable through the hole. We're going to plug it into one of the ports on the back of our screen. And then we're going to add a terminating resistor that's going to come with it into the other one. We'll add in our hardware. With our hardware here, I'm actually adding the bolt that passes all the way through here with a flat washer and a nylon lock nut on the other side. Uh, this panel is pretty thin, so I can't just put a screw in there to hold the panel on. And we'll come back and tighten the hardware down. And make sure you're not going to over tighten this so you don't crack the housing around the screen. You can pop your screen up or your cover, just like that. Now that we've got everything hooked up inside, we're gonna to connect to our battery. Connections are gonna be pretty simple. You have your negative wire. You're gonna add your ring terminal, hook it to the negative side of the battery. You have your power wire. Add your ring terminal, hook it to the positive side of the battery. And then you have your temperature sensor, which you're also gonna to hook to the positive side of the battery. Now that we've got our negative hooked up, we're gonna go inside. Now we've got all of our fuses in place. They're all marked. Your kit's gonna come with little stickers so you can mark what amp fuses you have in place. Remember, all of your 12 volt loads have a max 10 amp. And all of your bigger loads, like your air conditioner, your water pump, have a max 30 amp. It's also gonna come with stickers so you can mark what each one is. Now in order to get all this put on your screen, the icons and everything, it's gonna to have to be set up on your phone first. So or your computer. You're gonna download the program, you're gonna set up the icons the way you want, put in all of your battery information, stuff like that, and then you're gonna to have to have Bluetooth capability. So Bluetooth on your computer and Bluetooth on this screen or on, on this unit in order for everything on your screen for your phone or computer to transfer over to this screen. Once you have both of them set up, you'll be able to use either one to control your power. Once you've checked everything, you know everything's working correctly, you're ready to go. It's going to do it for a look at and installation on Red Arc's Red Vision on a 2017 Keystone Hideout.